Hey, what's up? It's I'm a Skater, and this is part two, Twixter settings. What you're going to do is open After Effects, go to Import, import your file, and for me, I saved it in its own little folder right here, Twixter Tutorial. Part three is going to explain why I have all these other videos and how I got such a wide shot, but for right now, I'm just going to show you the Twixter. Open up your file that you're going to be doing the Twixter on and drop it into a new composition. The new composition button is right here. Um, scroll across or move your clip down the timeline until you get to the point where you want the clip to start. The next thing you want to do is check your clip settings. Mine is at 1280 by 720 at 59.94 frames per second. Go to composition. Go to composition, check your composition settings, and make sure that your width and height and your frame rate all match your clip settings. Mine do, so I'm going to hit OK. You can actually extend the length of the time timeline to make sure that your clip accompanies the clip length after the Twixter, because it is going to extend the length of the clip, because you're slowing down. Um, the next thing you want to do is add Twixter Pro 4.5, or whatever Twixter you have, to your clip. You can just drag and drop. And uh, the first thing you want to do is match your input frame rate. Mine's 59.94, so I enter that in. The next thing you want to do is hit this little clock for speed at 100%. Drop down this arrow, or you can just hit E and that will bring down your effects. Drop down the Twixter Pro 4.5 one. Go down to output control. and make sure your keyframe is set. This is where keyframing gets into play and this is the easiest part of it to me. It's just, fun. well not the easiest but the most fun I guess you could say. Finding the spots to Twixter. Now for me I could Twixter this whole clip and make it one just fat 3% like slow-mo clip but that wouldn't be a cool video. It would just be really slow and really long. So what you want to do is find places that look cool to like Twixter and uh, jumping in the air, making it really slow mo, making it look like you're standing in the air. That's pretty cool. So I filmed a little clip of me just jumping. It's a weird face. <laughs> and uh, now what you're gonna want to do is set a keyframe by hitting this little diamond button, and it turns gold. So now you have two keyframes: the one that you set in the beginning by hitting the clock, and that activates the clock keyframe button thing. And uh, that puts one at the beginning. It's all in this first, let's see, seven seconds of the video. It is at 100% speed. I want the Twixter to about 3% as soon as I get my into my peak of the jump. So right about there, I want it to get really slow. So what you're going to want to do is add a keyframe, change the speed to 3% or whatever you want it to be. And that's going to make it go from 100 to 100, and then from 100 to 3. And then when it hits 3, that's where it slow mo's. <laughs> and then find the spot where you want it to speed back up. So on the come down, so I'll stop it about right there. Add another keyframe at 3% to make sure it stays 3% throughout the whole jump. Then go about a couple more frames ahead, about equal distance that you did in the first slow mo coming down, and uh, change it to 100 and hit enter, and that'll add another keyframe. So it goes from 100 to 3 to 100 again, just like that. Now you'll notice that the clip isn't over yet, but it goes to black. To fix that, all you have to do is right click your video, go to time enable time remapping and just pull the clip out and now it keeps going I go up for another jump and say you wanted to twixter two parts all you would do is set another keyframe at 100 to make sure it stays along the lines so it stays at 100 and I want it to twixter again right there because this clip is so crisp with the uh, shutter speed being at 4000 I can go down to 1% and it won't have any warp you may have warp, and the trick to not getting warp is to make sure everything in the entire video is in focus, to make sure that the movement in the video isn't too much, like doing skateboard tricks, like a tray flip or something like that. You can't twixter down to 1%. It's going to be warpy every, every single time, unless you have a camera that records at like 1,000 FPS. 
This only records at 60, so there are limitations. So you have to do simple movements. I dropped it down to one, and that's really slow. It doesn't even look like it's moving. So I'm going to ramp it up to five. So it starts at one, but it goes up to five. And you can see it start to move. And then I want it to come back up to 100. I want to come down. So it's slow and slow. And hits the ground and walks away. And that's basically it. And to make the clip look a lot better and not look so plain, like you're just slow moing something, you can add a, a color correction. And I do my color corrections in Magic Bullet Looks, and I have a couple presets that I've made. All you do is add looks, hit edit, and then when that opens up, go to just either make your own or just. I mean, I could I could probably make a preset package, but I'm just gonna throw on a preset for right now just for the sake of the tutorial so I'll use this one it's a little, it makes it have a little faded look more vintage then I always type in levels and try and crush the blacks for that filmy look so just like that and then another thing you could do to make it look even more like a film or a cool effect is add a crop and uh, there's different sizes of crops and if you don't know why you're putting it on don't put it on Call of Duty edits aren't supposed to have crops so they're not meant for Call of Duty and uh, basically I use a widescreen crop it's one of the most commonly used one a 2.39 and 2.55 I use a 2.39 for this one and it's the PNG file so you can just drop it on top and it has an alpha channel in the middle and uh, I didn't do this in the actual video, but another thing you can do, because now that you have this crop, you can make it look like you added movement with the camera. So what you're going to want to do is hit position, and say I want it to start right here, go up to the point right before I jump, and then just move the position up. And what that does is, looks like you have like a dolly or a tripod that's just scrolling up slowly as you're getting ready to jump and it just adds a little bit more of a filmy effect I don't know how to explain it other than a film effect and uh, basically that's it if you film in 1920 by 1080 you can do the same thing change your composition to 1280 by 720 and you can do the same thing but move it from uh, side to side which is also really cool you can make it look like an artificial dolly um, but that's basically it. The third part is going to be how I got the wide angle and how I got the whole truck in frame when the actual video itself is just like this. This is the whole video. So, look forward to part three. It's coming next. Late.